So what do we got here? We got the CAO One Flathead Spark Plug Cigar. Here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, look at that. This is one Flathead Spark Plug Cigar 450. 4.5 inches ring gauge 50. It even says it right there on there. I don't even need to... That's a lot of uh, fanfare for a cheap cigar. Yes, so online there, how much? Four bucks. Four bucks online. 100 bucks for a box 25. There we go. And also, individually boxed inside the box. It doesn't come in a, a, a cedar box. It comes in a cardboard box full of 25 of these things. Spark plugs. And then uh, celloed, and then a big wide uh, wrapper, or a band band as well. Um, also, closed on both ends. It's got a totally flat... Flat uh, head. head. It's got a flat head. And then a, a twisted closed foot. Which looks like, it definitely looks like that was all done when this thing was really wet. If you were to look at this, because it's, it's super shiny. Yeah. It smells very Maduro-y, which is appropriate. It's a broadleaf wrapper. Ecuadorian binder and Nicaraguan filler. Ecuadorian binder, Nicaraguan filler. Now, this is what they do. There's a few cigars that have the flat head, right? The um, Bromacraft, uh, the Endopal is one of them. And the preferred method for opening this thing is to take a double guillotine and just apply it to the side of the uh, thing and then just twist the cigar and then the whole top just pops off. So you don't actually have to cut into the tobacco. Now there would be a good draw based on just that, except that it's a closed foot, so you have to light it actually to open the cigar. Hmm. I'm, gonna use, I'm gonna use your big lighter because this thing. Maybe I'm not, you're out. That's not out. Uh, wasn't working. Your equipment. There you go. Working. I, I see that now. It works there too. Yeah, you know these things? The little thing skips. The what? So there's a screw in there, right? Yeah. That kind of holds it in place so that you have the plus minus there. Actually, what? I was doing the minus. <laughs> break it. There, there it's go. at plus. Alright. And that's what was happening before is that um, I had it on totally on all the way plus and it wasn't working and then I Sean at high time says did you adjust the screw right there and then flip it over and I'm like nope. And he's like just do that and it worked. Hmm. That's a pretty good lighter. Nice big, uh, it's the Freebird. I don't know what that means. Oh, it's called the Freebird. From the Leonard Skinner song? Oh, okay. You're wow. Okay. Seventies? Yeah. So cool. I'd, I'd like to use it. You wanna use it right now? <laughs> to light your cigar? Yes. <laughs> I mean, personally on this twisty thing here, I mean I'm almost tempted just to cut it off. Just because. You don't have to, but it's already it's already turned to ash. Well, you're really roasting that crap out of that thing over there. It's a four dollar stick. The Lawrence, uh, what's the name of the guy from Sauter Cigars? Lawrence. Oh. Uh, what is his name? Lawrence Davis. Davis. Larry Davis. Lawrence yes. Davis. Yeah. He uh, he really roasts and toasts. He does. Cigars before he lights them. Yeah. He does. Lawrence Davis. Seems oh, like you'd be a cool guy though. What did you do? I was trying to get the rest of that little bit off there and it kind of started pulling up the wrapper. So I'm going to leave my band on. Have you ever met Lawrence Davis? I have not. I have not. I would definitely smoke a cigar with that dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He is, uh, he's, he's, um, a, really appreciates a cigar. You can just tell from the way he smokes and the way he talks about him. He's, he's into it. 
got kind of a citrus thing going on there with that pepper in the nose. Lawrence Davis. Bad. Whoa. Are you just are you sure you're not just extrapolating from the lime green band of the box? <sighs> just a, a little bit of a citrusy kind of a thing. Yeah. Boy, talk about uh, frying pan and fire with the body on the last cigar compared to this one. <laughs> we recently smoked the Padron Millennium, and now we're smoking the opposite in pro probably every way. Price, <laughs> construction, body. Everything. Yeah. Um, provenance. Definitely, yes. But these guys, I don't know who I was watching or whatever they were talking about CAO how back in the day like they had new stuff all the time and everybody wanted to get their new stuff and they were just like the hot ticket going they were yeah CAO? yeah well this is, I mean this made, is back in the like 90s stuff. they make uh, didn't they make the soprano cigar mm. yeah. everything was crazy for for a while there You're not getting that kind of citrusy, kind of a tangliness on the palate at all? What's that word again? You're not? Tangliness. And there's like a bit of earth in there. I mean, it's like kind oh, of like earthy. tangly, earthy, uh, but almost like a minerally kind of a, uh -huh. uh, of a finish on the palate with that cigar. It's like really kind of rough, man. Yeah, almost like uh, they've added some oils. <laughs> Almost like, yeah, like what, rub the tobacco in a bunch of stuff and yeah. I mean, it's it's real dark, real dark wrapper, kind of a model wrapper. I mean, don't some people do a Maduro wrapper where they actually add stuff to the, the wrapper to make it that they dark? They sure do. They make a slurry out of uh, stems and, uh, uh, you know, cast off tobacco stuff. And they add, you know, water to it or whatever, and they sort of muddle it mm -hmm. and you get all the oils and it becomes this like black sort of s sort of pasty liquid and they paint the uh, wrapper leaves so that they look like a broadleaf Maduro leaf or, or dunk them or whatever mm. um, and that's that's one way to achieve a dark color leaf effect uh, other than the traditional methods which are fermentation and then heat fermentation, which just speeds up the process. And if you like blast a leaf with steam, it'll make it turn dark. But the real way to make a Maduro leaf is just through fermentation. And it doesn't get black through fermentation. That's just not gonna happen. The only way you can achieve black is with the more artificial methods. Hmm. Which this may be, I don't know. Pretty dark. Does it look painted to you? I always make me put my fucking glasses on. Dave, put your glasses on and take a close look at this wrapper. I mean, it's maybe the heat steam method or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's a really, really dark it's wrapper. Really dark. Not as dark as a like a mm -hmm. Unico series, Liga Pravada. Yeah, that's like black. I mean, that's what the Oscuro, like black mm -hmm. <clears throat> on that one. But uh, that's pretty dark. Yeah, because the uh, Cohiba Maduro 5 is not even, it's kind of like more of that lighter shade of oh, brown yeah. in there. There aren't any real, real dark uh, uh, Habanos. Yeah, the party of Maduro was not super. You know what was really dark though? Was the. Um, the Anonymous Extra 2011 was pretty dark. Yes. I was just going to mention that. That was really dark. Mm -hmm. A really, really dark wrapper on there. The most divisive Cuban cigar I can think of. Yeah. In terms of so many people hating it, and then the people who like it really love it. Yeah. I just like the fact they did that green and white band on there. Very pretty. Yeah, I like that green and white band. Yeah. I wish they would go back to that band, to be quite honest. They will, they're like some $30 special edition cigar with that band on it. I just like that The band. Suiza had that on there, too. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> well, one of the Suizas, I should say, that had several Swiss, Swiss special limitados or regionals. Wow, crazy, man.
Yeah, I see where you're getting the citrus. It's like a a high minerally acidic. Yes. Citrus. Yeah. Yeah. On the close to the tip of the tongue. It's just like whoa, man. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Yeah, four dollar stick. But I got them at the warehouse. I think they were six bucks at the warehouse. Yeah, they were six bucks. Six is pretty good. I mean, it, it's a it's a reasonably firm pack. There's quite a bit of, of tobacco there. We've been smoking it for a few minutes, and I'm only more like a quarter inch in, half an inch. Mm. That reminds me of a nub. Mm. I don't think I've ever smoked a nub. You never smoked a nub? Oh, I've smoked so. a bunch of nubs. It just seems weird to smoke a cigar <laughs> it is weird. deliberately that short. Yeah, it is weird, and it's like so like dense. It's really dense, but you I should try one. You we should do a nub sometime. Smoke a nub, and it's like, man, it's like, wow. Yeah, the Cameroon, I mean, it wasn't bad. Oh, but. Yeah, sure. I'll do a Cameroon. Yeah. What I'd like to do is get a hold of those uh, all Cameroon cigars up at the Tahoe Cigar Company. What's if he that? has any of those left. Tahoe Cigar Company? Up in Tahoe. Yeah. They roll them up there? No, no, no. Um, the guy, there was, the story goes where. This guy got all this Cameroon wrapper, binder, and filler and made these all Cameroon cigars. And then the guy that owns the Tahoe Cigar Company, I guess, basically bought up every single box that the guy made and they're only sold there. Interesting. Isn't that what the new Baca from Romacraft that is getting released this fall is supposed to be? Isn't it an all Cameroon cigar? You tell me. Supposedly, it's a very. Um, Difficult to work with as a wrap relief, I guess, because it's kind of thick and brittle, mm. and it's hard to, to, you know, roll a cigar with that as the wrapper, but very flavorful. So it's very toothy, probably. Yeah, I think of toothy as a uh, an exterior texture more than as, you know. Oh, okay. I think it's more like um, it's kind of thick and not as pliable. You know, even when you wet it down, you know, a cigar, cigar wrap relief. So a lot of them will kind of, them, kind of crack and yeah, break and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, kind of brittle. Yeah, it was Which an interesting is. cigar though, all Cameroon. I mean, Cameroon, it's got that sweetness by default, mm -hmm. which I like a sweet cigar. It was almost like a flavored cigar, but it wasn't. It was all Cameroon. It's interesting. Really looking forward to smoking that Baca when they come out, or if I can weasel one from somebody who went to the show. Uh, before they before they get really I guess you're using months. the correct terminology, weasel. That is the correct terminology in that case. And weaseling it. Yeah. You like Cameroon though. I do. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Cameroon. Well, Fuente uses a lot of Cameroon in their stuff too. Yeah. Pretty As sure. Even binder. I think they use Cameroon wrapper, binder, mostly wrapper and binder. I think. I mean, I not. Well, LSD sure. has a bunch. Do they? Love these can stuff. Really? Mm -hmm. Huh. I, have not, I haven't really been following much of the LFD stuff. So. Some of their more flavorful cigars. Hmm. I wish I had another beverage. I drank all of my um, large uh, straw. Uh, I do coffee. have. You want a. You want a. Uh, I got a bubbly water. Do you have any coffee laying around that you can just drop in here? Probably. With some sugar? Might have some, but she might be saving that for tomorrow morning. I'm not oh. sure. No. Bubbly water will work fine. Mm. Just a little bit. Yeah. So, Dave. Yeah. I'm looking at the FOH uh, auctions, Friends mm -hmm. of the Bono Cigar Auctions. Yeah. They just started this up a couple of months ago where, you know, um, either the, uh, the guys who run the site or individuals who have a humidified locker in Australia can sell their boxes by mm -hmm. auction on the site. And there's uh, there's five boxes on here right now that okay. I can see on, on this page. One of them is a Bahike 52 from 2014, okay. which is currently, uh, the current bid is over $1,000, which I think is really high for anything other than the 2010 original release. I don't understand that. I just really don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. Well, the Bahike, if that's Pretty over 1000 the 52 from 2010 or 2011 should be going for like 1500 or yeah. 1400 Yeah, at anyway. least 12 
Um, but the other four boxes, let's go through them. And it caught my eye just because we were just talking about the AI Onus Extra 2011. Mm -hmm. That's one of the boxes. Okay. Currently at about 500 bucks. So I'm going to go, there's four boxes here that are around $500. Okay. Tell me which box you buy if you have $500 and, and only can choose between these four. So that one, Ionis Extra 2011. There is a, uh, a nice looking box of fundies from 2011. Turned out fun doors, about the same price. Actually, right now the bid's exactly the same. You have Coros, Bohiba Robusto from 2015. They're a little under five, but they'll probably get there. Okay, keeping this in your head. So two 2011s and a 2015. And then this um, regional, uh, Porlar Nyaga Bellicoso Extra 2008. That is an Asia Pacific. Yeah, course, I uh, smoked that. So if you have to spend, and these are all 25 pound boxes, except well, the trend ads are 24. Um, so if you have to, uh, if you have to spend your 500 hard-earned dollars on one of these boxes, which one do you go for, and why? And which one is not interesting to you at all? Um, the Coros are not interesting to me at all. Interesting. Okay. Smoked a crap ton of Cohibas. So is it because of Cohiba or because they're the the most recent one, they're 2015? Yeah, 2015. I mean, 2015, I'm not that interested in a 2015 Coro. I mean, you got to, anyway. So it is an L -E -R -E -U -L -A. Yeah, but Pasadena on that one. Um, Pasadena. The, the um, you said the Fundadors from 2011, right? Mm-hmm. That's kind of an interesting uh, cigar. That one. That's a BLM May 2011. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, but still um, wouldn't be interested in that. The 2011 EL uh, Ramonionis, um, I remember flying out to Geneva in 2011 just to pick up the 1966 mm. and that one. Interesting year, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of speculation on that cigar, whether it's this, that, or the other thing. Um, the problem with that cigar is the burn on those cigars is they get very, um, they actually almost yep. look like that cigar. I mean, they're really dark and they, they don't burn straight. Yeah, it's been my, my experience with a number of them as well. I haven't had a single one of those that has burned straight ever. Um, but I do... Which is a construction issue. Yeah, yeah. I do, and they're a little bit underfilled too, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Um, and so I would pass on those too, and then so I have smoked the Asia Pacific, the 2008. Do you remember what you felt about it? You like um, it? it was a good cigar. It was, it had some nice typical Porla Renaga uh, traits to it. Let's just put it that way, and I enjoyed smoking it. Um, so out of the four, I would probably, if I had the 500 to spend, and I was going to spend it willy-nilly, I would buy those. And not because they're the oldest ones, just because, um, you know, like I said, the Trini, you know, Trinidad's Trinidad, Cohiba's Cohiba, and the construction issues on the EL 2011s, that, although I do like the flavor on those, they're a good... Me too good flavor on that cigar. Very savory for a Cuban cigar. I like that cigar, yeah. but to me personally, just because I, out of the four, I've smoked and had the best experience with that one. Mm -hmm. And the newer Trinis and the newer Kobe, because to me that 2011 is a newer, even though it's eight years old, but... <clears throat> 2011 is too new for Dave to smoke. It is. It's a new cigar. It's it's just getting going. Yeah. Well, not having any experience with the Pearl Arniaga, I mean, I do love the brand, but this particular cigar, the Bellicosio Extra, I maybe have smoked one, but if I have, uh, it didn't register as special to me. Um, I kind of feel the same way as you do on the Coros. Also, honestly, I've never had a great Coro. I'm still waiting for that great Coro. You experience. smoked a great one with me. A Coro? When? We did a 93 and a 95 together. Oh, you weren't that impressed with it. I thought that 93 was fucking phenomenal. Oh, right, right, the right. The 95, was, the wrapper was blowing up on yeah. it. Yeah. I gave you the 93. Okay. Oh, yeah, my if God. I want to go back 30 years. I gave him a 93 Coro, and he's like, I've never been impressed with Coro at all. I'm like, okay. It's kind of like one of those guys, you give him a cigar, he says, it's smooth. It tastes like tobacco. Why do I even come here? 
<laughs> no, it's yeah. And I have the end of a box of the the Ionis extra myself, so I'd probably go with the fundies. Yeah, you like the fundadors, yeah. And I would hope that that was a good year and code. Um, those are BLM May 11. So I'd probably go with those. I love fundies. It's a good cigar, definitely. Definitely a good cigar. Oh, we can throw a couple other things in the in the mix because there's another box that's kind of in the same price range. Boulevard Gold Medal 2008. This Next. is a 10-count box. Next. Not in your shit. For 500, for 50 a stick. <laughs> yeah, not that. Like the original Gold Medals before they did all that stuff. Yeah, maybe mm -hmm. that, but not that. I'm not that. Uh, there's some um, 2011 Lusitanias. They're four. That actually, right now. that I would not mind that. That Pretty the good. 2011 Lucies. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there's a box of 2015 Money Twos that are going for 350. That seems high. 2015 might well because it's a very popular cigar. Yeah, but I'll tell you one thing: the 13s and 14s were pretty gosh darn good. I really enjoyed those. 13, 14, and 15, to my mind, and then early uh, or late uh, 17, also. Yeah, because I I smoked the 13s and 14s, not the 15s, but I smoked 13s and 14s. When I, and it was one of those, you know, how we were talking, you were talking how you smoked that cigar and you lit it up, and you're like, man, this is like pretty good. And I'm not a big fan of Monte either. Like you're not a big fan of Monte. I mean, I like Monte Cristo. It's a pleasurable cigar, but there's other cigars that I would rather smoke. Mm -hmm. And um, but that cigar was like, wow. Man, that was a good cigar. Yeah. So. Here's an intriguing one. Tell me how you feel about these. Four Lar Niaga Monte Carlos. I like that. Yeah. From 2015. Mm -hmm. Box code TOS September 15. It's a 25 count box of Slim Penitellas. Mm. How much would you pay? For that? For Poor Laura Naga, Slim Panatella, Monte Carlo. 2015. PR 2015, so they're four years old. I would say around between 250 and 300. Currently, they are a bargain at 140. Now, I think that new, these boxes are like 80 or 90 bucks, something like that, if you can order mm -hmm. them. Um, but I will tell you, if, if it's anywhere near this price, I'm going to bid on them because of the code. TOS September 15th. That is <clears throat> phenomenal to have that. Yeah. And Port Larnia. We love Port no, Larnia. I like that format, that Slim Panatella format. Me I mean, consider, I mean, one, they're at 140. And you can't smoke them down. Like, new yeah. Port Larnia Panatellas are uh, the Monte Carlos. They're unsmokable, yeah. by and large, you know, year to year. Um, I have a box that I'm planning on sitting on for, I've sat them for two years. I'm going to sit on them for another two before I break them out. But these are probably ready to go and they're probably really good. Yeah, yeah. There's and a couple of days left in the auction, but. Yeah, I would see where they end up. I'm going to. I bet they end up about two. I bet they end up to about two, two fifty. You know, some of the smaller format cigars in, the, in this auction have not been. Um, Oh, that's right, because a lot of people don't like small format they cigars. They don't, they don't like them that much. Which, to, that's more for us. Exactly. I don't need another box of small format cigars, but again, if these guys end up uh, end up at a reasonable price, I'm going to give it a shot. What's the shipping on that? It's like, there's a 10% auction fee. I think there's a 3 or 3.5% three uh, credit card fee mm -hmm. and shipping free. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. So you're still you're still looking at like 160 all in right now. I bet. Yeah. Well, they may not go for 200 because it was that's such a tiny cigar. The Slim Danicella. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Keep an eye on those. Yeah, I like. Yeah, I like that format. Just so nice to smoke. And when they're on, I mean, you know, when you smoke a, a smaller ring gauge cigar, when it's on, it's just such a, you get all that flavor in there. I mean. So we just, smoked, a, didn't we smoke a couple of Slim Panatellas, um, Pearl Arniagas from Hong Kong when you got back? No. What were they? Once again, your memory fails you. 
Kate, Once again? Kate Orsay. It was a Kate Orsay. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it was a Kate Orsay. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> oh, man. We babied those, and they were just, they were spectacular. Yeah, that was a, it was a, a Kate Orsay. Thank you. Original Kate Orsay, yeah. Yeah. And they were, what, a 33 ring gauge, something like that? Maybe even smaller, 28? Um, no, I think that ring gauge is a little bit bigger, like 36, but I'm not sure. 36 right sounds fat for that cigar to me. Cause I it, was real, it was really skinny, delicate. yeah, you know, you're, you're right. It's probably like a thinner ring gauge. Um, let me see here. Heading over to the Cuban Cigar website? Yeah. Where we spend way too much time? Well, I've been uh, going back and forth with Alexander Groom on some stuff. The Raz. You can just go to the top thing and go, well, I guess, Kate or say there's not that many. You can just flip through the whole thing. Oh, where's it at? Where's it at? There it is. There it is. Yeah, 33 by 178, Slim Panatella. So seven inches long. 36. Your memory fails you again, Dave. Yeah. Well, <laughs> But those were great. And those were from the humidor, right? Yeah, those were shop? from probably 19... If I had to venture a guess, that those cigars were from 1997. I like anything that starts with 19. Yeah, those, those cigars were probably from about 1997 to 95. And those were everyday smokes in the, uh, in the shop, uh, in the lounge, right? Lounge is private lounge box. Yeah, he had like a, that was a really cool humidor that he had, um, and it had the, the, what is it, the Hong Kong flag and the, the Cuban flag next to one another, and there was only one of those made for him. Was and it the, made by Habanos, or was it made by... I think uh, it's an Ellie Blue. Oh, Ellie Blue. Blue. Oh, well, that's a really nice humidor, though. Yeah, it was an Ellie Blue made for him, and, uh, that's yeah. cool. That's, uh, seems like the right design of humidor for yeah. your friend. Yeah. It's kind of mellowed out a little bit, though, this thing now. It's actually gotten... Uh, I don't know. Not so much for me. I think I've just... My mouth has just gotten coated with... Yeah. I mean, you definitely... Uh, it's got, like... It's starting to coat it, but I'm getting a little bit less of that tanginess on there. It's actually kind of getting a little bit oily. Um, there's uh -huh. getting, coating the palate a little bit on here. And uh, the ash is, like, super flaky now, though. It's like... It's that, unlike that last one that we smoked, which was like a coin stack ash. I like that. Coin stack ash. It's a greasy smoke anyway. Yeah. It's not dry. I miss, uh, I have a, a Tejava tea now with this, but I miss having the coffee because the coffee would have gone better with this. Uh, and also the coffee kind of <laughs> overpowered the Millennium uh, cigar a little bit because it was so sweet. I don't think you could have Tea would have been good with it. Yeah. Thinner, okay. Delicate. No. I don't think there's anything you could have drank with that that would have overpowered it because it was so underpowered. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about future reviews that we have coming up. <coughs> yeah. Um, you've got a couple of domestic custom rolls. That, that you want us to smoke that yeah. looked pretty exciting to me. Um, and um, we smoked Illusion, we smoked Warped, now we've smoked CAO, we smoked Roma Craft. We haven't done a Fuente yet. I've got some interesting stuff. If you really wanted to ball out, we could do like a 20th anniversary opus, the Blue Band. Um, I, I didn't realize I wasn't that crazy about those. Well, then I'll save those for me. Yeah, same for yeah, you. Like yeah. Um, it was, but you know, I think they were we trying to do an aged opus. Do that. Got some stuff from like, uh, you know, mid two thousands. Yeah. I, mean, I got a tin. We can crack into a tin. Oh, oh you got the little three tin. Uh huh. Yeah. The it's old. Yeah. yeah. The, the, with the robustos, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are really cool. I like those. Yeah. Great. Uh, great packaging. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun tin. That that is like really cool. You get that tin of them and you open it up and mm -hmm. a little clunky with the metal. Yeah, but I, I really like that because if you just, if you went into a shop and you just needed to travel or you were traveling mm -hmm. and you just needed to stick it in your coat pocket or whatever, 
Yeah. It's stiff. It's right. Great cigars. It's actually a little bit of a price break, I think, if you buy the the tin as opposed to buying trying to buy them individually in the shop. Yeah. So it's great. Yeah. Um, but these have been these have been sitting in there for a long time, and the tin has cello on the outside of the tin as well. Yes, they're wrapped in cello, and then the cigars are wrapped in mm -hmm. cello or cello, depending on. Mm -hmm. Whether you say tomato or tomato. Or whether it, you're talking about the instrument or the thing that cigars are wrapped in. <laughs> Ooh, this has got a big step. <laughs> oh man, tomato, tomato. Uh, I don't know if that's tomato, tomato. That's more like tomato pear. Tomato apple? Tomato apple. <laughs> Well, I always say that I'm English simplified, and I, I truly stick to being English simplified. Uh, we also did the awesome crawl, yeah, uh, which we liked, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know. We got to. I feel like uh, we should branch into a, a few more of the smaller, uh, the smaller manufacturers. Yeah, that sounds good. I mean, I'm always up to smoke a cigar. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to do a McAuliffe, because I don't think I've ever smoked one before. They just got them in down um, in El Segundo at Cigars and More. Uh, and they got some of the less expensive ones. Like McAuliffe, when they started out, they were at like that $25, $30 price point. Mm. And they've got some in the sub $15 range down there. Mm. So that would be fun to smoke something like that. Um, Balmoro? Sure, if you want to go low again. Balmoros are kind of expensive, aren't they? I don't think so. They're like between 10 and 20 bucks a stick. Oh. Hmm. I wouldn't want to spend $20 on a Balmoro based on my previous experience. Yeah, and they got those. Um, Atabe, you ever smoked an Atabe? I have, people are crazy. designed to look like a Cohiba and they're really pricey. Yeah, they're crazy. They people. have them at Warehouse and I've never, I've never I've been willing Atabay. to pony up for those. I have smoked the Atabe. And, um, actually, but it's true though, like the word of mouth on them is really good. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> All right. I mean, I smoked it. We can smoke another one. They're a little expensive, but uh, actually, I like the Placencia one better. The Alma Fuerte, I guess you, it's mm -hmm. called. I like that better than the Atabay. We could do a Placencia. Um, I haven't smoked a lot of them. The Toro, we could try that. Uh, you know what I really want to get is the European blend of the Patoro, because that has Cameroon in it. Sounds good. Yeah, that I would really, I don't know how we would be able to get the European blend of the Patoro, but... We just have the Europe send us a couple. Well, actually, my buddy in Florida, he's he was over there, and he's got this special, like, medallion or whatever it is, where he can just show the medallion, and he can go in the Patoro labs there. In Florida? In Europe. He's got a Patoro medallion. To like go into the, the, a Patoro like he met the Patoro people. Uh -huh. He met them. It's like a doctor and a. There's a doctor and some other guy. It's not the. It's not Kellner. It's some. I thought it was. I think it's Kellner's. Isn't it Kellner's grandson who's really is it? involved in some way? I don't know. But we may be wrong on our detail. He met them, and you know, because he had the shop in in uh, Florida that he was doing. And then he went over there. It sounds, what you're describing, sounds davidoff frankly, to me. Yeah. You know, like that exclusive Swiss, yeah. yes, come, yeah. come right this way to your, uh, you know, your private uh, bank room. Yeah. And and so he showed me the medallion. He's like, yeah, I just, he gave me this. And they said, come anytime. And you show the medallion and get in the lounge. Where is it? I think in Zurich, I think. Or outside, no, it's outside of Zurich. It's some... City outside of Zurich, somewhere is where he was at. Little Zurich, something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Do you have to speak Swiss in order to get in? I don't know. <laughs> you have to speak Swiss. Well, you could probably speak Swiss either is not German a language or French or Italian or English. But I mean, the two predominant languages there, because in the north they speak German, more of a German, and they do have a Swiss language, I believe. There's no Swiss language. No. There isn't? No, there's German, they speak German, English, Italian, and French. I thought that they spoke some kind of a dialect that was Swiss, that was kind of a hodgepodge of the whole thing. No. You want me to look at it while I'm going. Or you could just accept that I'm right. I thought, I could have swore 
I could have swore that they had like a Swiss, anyway, whatever. So, but in the north they speak more German, and in the south, east, they speak more French because they're by the French border. Maybe the south, south, they, they're by the Italian border, they speak Italian? I, think, I feel like all of them are so well moneyed and educated and worldly that they all speak all four languages in Switzerland. Well, if you speak three languages, you're trilingual, right? Right. If you speak two languages, you're bilingual, right? Right. If you speak one language, you're an American. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and four is a... Um, superfecta. A superfecta. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to go with that. Superfecta. Quad, quad, quad well, langural, whatever. Quad, quadrilingual. I can't even say it. It makes my tongue hurt. When I do that, I think after three, it's just like you're forget just about a, it. You're a Renaissance person. Yeah, you're like uber language speaking person. Look at that. What happened? It's I've it. got a little brown it's... stuff on my finger, and I think it's from the I think it's from the wrapper. Yeah. Like wipe it off. Oh wow. Holy cow. It's, it's probably on our lips right now. It's definitely on our lips. I can feel it on my lips. So this lends more credence to the painted wrapper uh, theory mm. that we, we originally, there's some, some it, it's smearing onto, onto our fingers. So probably these wrappers are painted. Not to like drag the CAO people or whatever, but like we know this is something that happens in the industry. We know that it's, nobody in this industry is ever going to admit that they do it. They all say, oh no, it's natural fermentation. Um, but it's a really dark wrapper. Frankly, it looks painted and the, the uh, brown is coming off on my hand. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <clears throat> I'm gonna run in and kiss my girlfriend with my brown lips. <laughs> She'd get so excited about that. Oh uh, yeah. Not. Girlfriends always love cigar kisses, right? Oh, they do, right? yeah. Especially when you come in from a long walk, you're all sweaty, and you go out and smoke a cigar, and then you come back in, so you got your... Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just funk head to toe. Yeah, absolutely. It's always a good thing. Yeah. Mm. Sun finally came out. Finally. It's nice. It's real nice. But yeah, this has been the, the cloudiest, gloomiest summer so far, I think. I mean, it's crazy. We had the earthquake too. Oh, did you feel the earthquake? I felt the one on July 4th, because we were still in bed. And then I did not feel the one on the 5th. I was out walking Arthur, walking my dog, and um, neither one of us registered it. I started getting, you know, Twitter notifications and whatever, and I was like, oh, two minutes ago there was an earthquake. Yeah, 7.1, I guess. That was pretty big. 7.1 is big. I mean, fortunately, it was deep, and it was kind of out away from L.A. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I saw some Twitter video of people's, like, swimming pools sloshing out of the pool and everything, um, and it looked, uh, like, not that much fun. Well, we, uh, we were had a little get-together in the front there where the pool is, so when that's... The first one, I was doing a turn to Chicago. Some people weren't invited. You, you were around? I would... Man, I would have more than... In, just kidding. Well, no, we had a, we had a barbecue one. I kind of... Because you told me, you're like, well, we're kind of busy. We're kind of busy. So I was like... Well, yeah, we were. If he's busy, I don't want to bother him. He's got important things going on over there. Very busy. <laughs> so, uh, but we were outside, you know, having a little pool party with people in the stack here, so to speak. And um, it stack. started rolling. And, but the pool didn't slosh too much, really. Hmm. It was just, it was kind of like rolling and rippling, and then it kind of got going a little bit, but... It was what they call a slow roller. Yeah. It was definitely, it wasn't like shake, 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 shake. It was more like... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so... And it went on for a while. It was like 30, 40 seconds. It was, yeah, it definitely was a roller. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was rolling on the river, rolling on the fault line. Definitely. So Creedence Clearwater Re Revival reference. Exactly. From the old man. Yeah, from the old man. That's me. Old guy. Is uh, John Fogarty, does he still sing? He had that amazing I think he does. whale of a voice, you know? I think he still sings. Yeah. 
probably can't hit the high notes like you used to. I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe can Robert Robert Plant. I don't think Robert Plant can hit this. Or uh, Steve Perry. Probably him, but I'm thinking the Who. Roger Daltrey. Because hmm. they're still. still I've, he's I've with heard, Townsend. Yeah, I've heard them them swinging the microphone around. Still doing it. Yeah. They're still doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Man, those guys are all so old. Like Mick Jagger's almost 80. They're still uh, out there. Hall and Oates, Daryl Hall's like over 70. I heard him saying he still sounds amazing. Really? So okay. good. Yeah. Okay. Where'd you see him at the fair or something? Or? Verizon Amphitheater down in OC. Well, it's called Verizon now? Uh, right off there where the El Toro Y yeah. is? Yeah. Well, it's not the El Toro Y anymore, I guess. I don't know what they would call it now, but because it used to meet at El Toro, which I used to live in El Toro mm. when it was called El Toro. What's it called now? Lake Forest. Oh, I like El Toro better. Yeah. Sounds like a bunch of white people moved in and decided to change the name of the town. I don't know. Lake, it's called Lake Forest. and uh, Because that's, you know, those people would change the name to something like Lake Forest. Mm. Yeah, I used to um, go out there right where the Navy or the Marine Corps base was and watch them do touch and goes with the, like, oh, that's the cool. F whatever F series, I think F-16 yeah. or F-15 or... Uh, F-15. I think, yeah. And they would come in, Third like, roar base. in and just <laughs> touch and go, touch and go. And it was pretty loud. I imagine so. Yeah, it was fun. <clears throat> really fun. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I worked down in San Diego, they uh, on the on North Island they would have the warthog would be doing touch and goes down there too. Oh, the warthogs! Yeah, they had those. Uh, I went to school in, in Tucson, and the warthogs. There's uh, I forget the name of the Air Force Base there. They actually still have it. They were going to close it down, and then they had the first Gulf War where the warthogs were like the shit because they were killing all the tanks and they're armored and everything. Yeah. And they decided it, I think it was John McCain actually like saved the uh, the Air Force Base there, and they were like. We need to not shut this down because these planes are actually still really valuable for the desert warfare that we're doing. But we used to see those things flying in double formation, you know, over the campus all the time. Tucson. Tucson, Arizona. They have the graveyard out there too. Yes, the airplane graveyard. I've been to that. From uh, the movie Can't Buy Me Love. They go there. Oh, do they? Okay, because they have the... Well, they have the, the real one, like the one where they mothball everything for that you can't get into. And then across the street, across the street, they actually have one where you can pay to get into. I did mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. And they had a B-52. I mean, they had like all kinds of sure. airplanes in there. It was really cool. And I took a bunch of pictures and then I was on a layover there and I went with one of the guys from the crew and we took a bunch of pictures and I lost them all. I don't know where they're at. Mm. They also have, in two, outside of Tucson, um, if you go north and west, I think it's Gates Pass, um, there's the Arizona Sonora Desert Museum out there, which is really, it's not really a museum, it's like an eco park, and they have uh, like groundhogs, like family groundhogs, you know, that live there, and you can mm. see them, and they have a big, huge hummingbird garden that's all enclosed, and you go in, and the hummingbirds are like all around you and stuff. Wow. And they have all the, you know, different kinds of cactus and other desert plants and stuff. It's really nice, especially if you go there towards sunset. It's so serene up there. Okay. It's great. We get hummingbirds in the fountain back there. I know, I've seen them. We get these little fat sparrows that go in there and splash around, and it's very cute. Very cute. We like that. Fouling your water. Yeah, fouling the water. Yeah, I, I stopped... Uh, I mean, I just do straight water in there now. I used to add like vinegar in there, mm -hmm. but when I start, started seeing the birds, guys stopped putting anything in there. Just, That's probably good. Yeah, so I don't want to, you know. want to hurt the little birdies. I don't. I don't want to hurt the birds. So I just start putting regular water in there. It's harder to clean, but try and yeah. keep the ecosystem alive. Eco conscious. Yeah. yeah, you want to you wanna keep your birds around. Yeah. To it's, keep the cat population down. The birds come and swoop. Down, they grab a cat and all eat it together. Like the little raptors. <laughs> My god, the velociraptor. Yeah. Yeah. It's got it's got that. It's still got that minerally very minerally. Kind of a aftertaste, finish, whatever you want to call it on there. 
Reminds me a little bit of um, the Papas Fritas mm. from Drew Estates. The little tiny guys. They're not super cheap. They're no. probably, what, $7, $8 range, something like that? Yeah. Although they're small. But it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. That's, you know, cigars. Well, there's a story to that, right? There's a story. Every cigar seems, you know, the ones that sell will always have a story to them, it seems like. Yeah, is that important to you as a consumer? No, but I think it is. A, I think story obviously, and marketing and the you know the, the legend that the manufacturer is trying to kind of put out there yeah. to make you want to be interested in smoking it. I think it's important to people out there, though. For, you know, I mean, I think that it creates a buzz and it makes it at least to where people want to try it. So I think the better that your story is with whatever it is that you have. At least you're going to get someone trying it for the first time, and you're going to get a broader range of people that are going to try it. Like if I was going to be doing a cigar, I would definitely want to um, have. You mean a blending a cigar of your own? Yeah, yeah, I would definitely want to get a story behind that, mm -hmm. and um, and definitely have that story in place. Um, my favorite cigar story, at least of recent years, is uh, Fuente does a cigar line called Casa Cuba. Yeah. And they have several different sizes, and they have a, a couple of different kind of layers within the, the blend. And um, when Carlos Fuente Sr. was ill before he passed away a couple of years ago, um, he was in bed, his deathbed as it turned out, and he had an idea <clears throat> to tweak the blend of the Casa Cuba line. <clears throat> and he phoned it in to the factory because he couldn't go down there and do it himself. And he said, make this, you know, change to the blend. And then he passed away shortly after. <clears throat> and they call that blend the divine inspiration. And that's a, it's, it's a little bit of a morbid story, but it's also a great cigar. It's a good story. Yeah. 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 And people try that kind of stuff. And, and um, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. They do. Are we getting washed out there? No, we're still, look I think we're looking okay. I think we're fine. Yeah. It's no, it's not our worst uh, video Wash effort out. so far. Yeah, I think we're looking okay. Getting a little brighter though. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that that um, that's kind of a key thing, and I think Drew Estates is really good at, at putting a story together. Um, uh, what you call it? Who else does a good story? Um, your buddy Kyle does a good story for his stuff. Um, Ventura Cigar, particularly with their Archetype line. Very into the iconography. I mean, we've talked about um, Illusione yeah. before. Like, super into he's that. He's more like a, he doesn't do, he does the iconography, but he doesn't, there's not a story. Well, have I you think. ever gone to like his site where you can kind of just yeah. talk around and go into all kinds of directions? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely some deeper level marketing effort going on there, which is kind of cool. Well, he used to have a, where you have to put a password in there. Right. But he got rid of that because, like, probably because there were no dumbasses like me, like, <laughs> calling him up. Hey, what's the password? There is no password. Just hit enter. You know, right. <laughs> it's like dummy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so he got rid of that for stupid people like me. <clears throat> um, that, but yeah, there's a lot going on with that. But he, you know, he's not out there. Um, I think with the telling the story. I think that he's more of a let the let it speak for itself kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, Steve Saka. Mm -hmm. Definitely a story with those cigars. Yep. I well, think. Yeah, anything Saka is going to be a story. Yeah, I think so. With that. Mm. Have you had a chance to try the Sin Compromiso? Oh, that's that's a, definitely a brand we need to do a review on. We should do the Sin Compromiso or, or something interesting from Saka. It's going to cost us a little money to do that one. My, I've smoked all of them, and I still think the Silver Mace is the best. Hmm. The only one I haven't smoked is the one that he's done. He's he's made it a unicorn. West or the Saka unicorn. Yeah, I mean, I haven't smoked that one, but I've smoked everything else. You smoked the West or the Saka, the regular one in the coffin? Yeah, you got the coffin in there. Really good. Yeah. yeah. I really like it. The Silver Mesa for me was like the, the, you know, and that was the first one he came out with. I'm like, man, this is a really good cigar. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, he really 
kind of beefed it up. Because the Silver Mesa is not as girthy as the rest of the line going out. And to me, I don't know. Um, I know that it's hard to make a cigar that you only that you like and then everybody else is gonna like and you gotta kinda probably branch out and do stuff where you think we're the majority of the people are gonna like it. And I think maybe that may be where he has gone with that, even though he may say it's something different. But to me, <clears throat> with his stuff, with that, I think that he's progressively gotten stronger with his blends mm -hmm. on there, uh, as opposed to the Sober Mesa, which to me is not as girthy as the rest of them. That's just my opinion. I need to get some more, um some more stickers for my cigar caddy. Because I've got my Weasel Team sticker. Where's your Saka Squatch? I have no Saka Squatch. That's, I would love to have one of those. I, don't, I have my Warped Drop over here. I don't have anything from Luzione. Is that one on the bottom there? This? Yeah, Uncle. Uncle Polly's is a, a deli here in, in LA. And I have the big poppy, of course, because Red Sox mm -hmm. Um but I need some more stickers on there. The vinyl stickers, like uh, like the warped or, or the Roma sticker and uh, the warped sticker, are great. They never uh, they never tear. So much better than the paper stickers. Yeah. You need a bigger case though. If you're going to be start doing that. Well, we'll see. <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. Hey, you got your name on the side there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that uh, if, it, if I leave it somewhere. And look, you got a telephone number on there, which you never answer. No, I don't answer. <laughs> I never so why put that my you, phone Why did you just put the, you got the email on there? Uh, that's my work email. Okay, so you'll answer that. Okay, so that's good. I mean, someone can email you, but if they call you, forget it. Well, well I mean, if they let message. the message, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. They don't need a message. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's good. I like those caddy cases, though. They're nice. I got the bigger size, the taller one. The 15? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I, that's a good idea. 15 is a little too big. It just feels cumbersome. Yeah, it is. 10 is great. You can put that in your suitcase and it's kind of yeah. it sits in there a lot better than that bigger one. Yeah, it'll sit in the bottom of a backpack and then I just, on the plane, I just put all my snacks on top of it. Yeah, yeah, because you're not going to be smoking on the plane. That's for sure. No, although I would love to. Great. I did get to smoke uh, on the bullet train in Japan, going 200 miles an hour. It was great. You were smoking a cigar? It was a smoking room. Oh. A smoking car. Oh. So uh, on the Shinkansen uh, train between you know Kyoto, well, for me it was between Kyoto and Tokyo, um, there's a smoking, there's one smoking car on the train. And there's a, you know, you're going from one car to the next, there's an, an, um, an alley in the middle. And on either side, there are these sliding glass, narrow um, smoking areas. And there's a bunch of ashtrays, you know, set into the Is that the an extra fee? Or no, you... oh. no, it's just available to anybody. Wow, that's um, really cool. And so you go in there, and if you stand in front of the glass, the glass slides open, and you go in, and it slides shut behind you, and uh, you can smoke in there. And I smoked a, smoked a cigar at 200 miles an hour. It was awesome. Wow. I was the only one in there. <clears throat> You just gave me a whole loss in translation. Mm, I kind of like that. Kyoto. 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 There's a, yeah. I like that movie. Good movie. And Bill Murray, of course, smokes his cigars up in the, uh, in the bar. At that hotel. The bar. Yeah, I'd like to go there. Did you go there? I did. You smoke in the bar? that bar and bought a Cohiba in there. Overpaid for a Cohiba. Would you pay, like, about 70 bucks? It was not that much. But it was like it was like a CeeLo two or CeeLo three, okay. and it was like thirty. It was way over the regular price for because the lounges in Japan, you know, or the shops in Japan are all the na they're nationalized uh, pricing, so it's the same price for the same scar everywhere. But up there in the lounge, it was like I want to say it was fifty bucks a head, twenty five or fifty bucks a head just to get in because they have live jazz and whatever. Mm -hmm. Super swanky. Was Sausalito Arcade. playing there? Uh, Sausalito was not, but it was another like very attractive looking uh, redhead. Like maybe I don't know if she was a redhead or whatever. Oh. Um, but we went in, we had a couple snacks, a couple cigars, um, and it is like the view when it's a clear night. 
it's just so you were feeling flush then too weren't you oh that japan trip was awesome i would go back there in a minute Very great flush. food amazing people the sights smoking i mean diplomatico's bushido's on the shelf <clears throat> probably not now how can you beat that maybe not you never know you never know how many, you know, how many boxes they stocked up on and other people have started just buying them. That's pretty expensive. Did you buy one when you were there? Mm -hmm. Well, how much was it? This was like three years ago. It was 50, 50 bucks. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you like that cigar a lot. I've never smoked it. Best cigar I've ever smoked was a 2015 Bushido. That's saying something. Mm -hmm. That is saying something. Wow. Yeah, I never smoked that one. Ever. Oh, I've smoked a CAO one. Flathead 450 spark plug. I'm smoking one now. Yeah, we're both smoking one right now. I have a feeling uh, we're looking potentially at another thumbs downer on this one, even for a cheap cigar. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, yeah. I mean, compare this even to the less expensive cigars we've already smoked on here, and I can think of a couple others like the Luzione Rothschild, the Punch uh, Rothschild. Um, it's, it's not going to be one that I'm going to choose ever over those. Yeah, and that, uh, the custom roll at uh, High Times. Yes. Yeah. The Awesome Crawl Toothpicks, also better than this. I smoked that toothpick. You did? Yeah, and you're right. It, it was better than this. But not as good as the Red Knight. Yeah. Yeah. And I smoked the other one, the Craw Lot. Craw Lot. Oh, Craw Lot. Yeah, Kray -Lot. The, the Gold Band. Still like the Red Knight better than that one. Mm. I think I like Red Knight best too. Yeah, Red Knight. We still got the two uh, kind of. Um, oh, the other one. Yeah. Yeah. I forget what it's called. It looks like a. We'll get to those. It looks almost like a Lancero, but. It's sort of a fat Lancero. A Lonsdale, maybe. I don't know. It's like yeah. in between that kind of a thing. Yeah. The Guido number one, maybe. Yeah. Something like that. Or, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, this is. Uh, <clears throat> definitely uh, pushing through on this thing. Mm -hmm. right. you gotta... It's not It's not doing anything. It's not changing. I don't expect it to um, do anything but maybe ramp up the strength over the next inch or so. Yeah, it's too bad. It's already pretty high. I mean... It's, it's got that just... But that whole minerally finish on there is just really off-putting. Good construction, though. Yeah. Flaky ash, good burn. Yeah, flaky ash, definitely. Um, interesting format with the flat head and the pigtail foot. There's a lot of people that like the flat head line, though. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that are crazy about it. No, those this are mouth set. smokers. Those are puffing it, probably not not retrohaling it much. But even if you're just puffing this cigar, I mean, it's like you're still getting that, you know, that merely. Yeah. I wonder if, if that has something to do too with the marketing on this cigar, the whole gearhead car yeah, mechanic think, aspect yeah. to it. You know, they kind of want it that oily, minerally taste. Yeah, That's what they're going for. And once again, a story, right? You got the whole, and then the the presentation on that stuff is like a, you know, all the kind of the car, all that car Definitely. stuff. Definitely, it, the it boxes. looks like a box of spark plugs. Yeah. And then there's other ones that they do there's where a it looks spark plug on them. Label. Yeah, they do in the box. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nice the way that they market that and mm -hmm. do that and put it out and everything like that. But yeah, and you get oil on your hands while you're working it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's true. Although, like, I just did my brakes and my um, changed my oil in my car. I need to do my brakes. <clears throat> and uh, you know, I I wear those plastic gloves now doing it. It's, man. I wish I would have been doing that years ago. You did it yourself? Yeah. You did your brakes yourself? Yeah. Oh, you want to do mine? Not particularly. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. Will you charge me less money than my mechanic will charge me? What's your mechanic charge me? I don't know. It's yeah. been a while since I've had them done. I don't remember. What, you, uh, you got a SUV, right? I got a four-runner. Yeah. So, and it's probably four-wheel disc, right? No. It's no, not? You got drums in the back? Yeah. Drums are a pain in the ass. Like, they're really, and they're like, yeah, drums. I had drums on, I had a Yaris. It had. A Yaris had drums? 
in the back, huh. disc in the front. And uh, but usually your your back brakes are not they're not going to wear as fast mm -hmm. as your fronts, but your fronts usually wear pretty fast. And disc is easy because you just um, you know you get the caliper and there's the two bolts in there and then and actually you can uh, at times you can just do the top and then slide it this way and then you got a little uh, there's a little kind of a piston thing where you like put in there and then you spin it and then it pops the piston back out and then you put the new pads in there and then just slide it back up and then do that I mean the hardest part is jacking up the car mm, right and then you just need to make sure that like your brake line because on mine, the brake line is attached, so you have to undo that, and then it gives you uh, slack. That's kind of scary. Undoing the brake line. Well, no, no, you don't. You just—it's got a bracket that holds it in place. Mm -hmm. So you just undo the bracket, and then that gives you it. It takes it off of the whatever the whatever that thing is, and then it gives you slack so that the brake line will move with the caliper because the brake line is attached to your caliper. Oh, it stays attached. Everything, no, you're, you're not, not draining anything. No, 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 no. No, you don't want to do that. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, you just undo the thing, and then the pads just slide in there after you do the uh, the caliper. Not the caliper. Yeah, the caliper. And then you just, the piston in there, you got to push that back. And But there's a tool that I have, and then you just spin it. It's kind of like a, a reverse clamp, you know, where you have, like, in wood shop, you had a clamp, and then you had the thing that would clamp it down. Mm -hmm. Well, this way, the... The thing just there's a flat thing that goes against the inside of the caliper, and then as you spin the thing out, there's a little piston that pushes against the piston. Yeah, I think I see what you're talking about. Although I'm glad that I'm not, I don't have to learn how to do this from your description. So I would definitely mess my car up. Yeah, it's not. I mean, like, I'm just gonna spin some things around and YouTube some stuff up. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube's great. It is. It's uh. But it's uh, learning how to do stuff, and you sweat, and then you get that funk all over. You, you feel like you really did something. Smoke a cigar, go see your girlfriend. Yeah. Well, I was down in Orange County because here you can't work on your car here. So uh, down there, I've got all this stuff to. Do you drive it up on the little ramps, or do you bring it to a place <clears throat> so you can lift it? Or no, no. Uh, I just did it in my driveway. So, and the problem with because I have a Kia Soul now, and the problem with that is that you have to. There's no real jack points in there with a floor jack. Mm, right. So you what so it I just doesn't matter. You just grab a piece of the body and just lift it right up. No. <laughs> so I do have the little ramps when I change the oil. So I put it up on the little ramps and then there's a cross member underneath there where you can get enough to put the floor jack in there and then you jack it up off of the ramps and then do it. So here's what happened though is uh you know like all doing the brakes and I get it all done and everything like that and then I forgot that the car was on the jack <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like so I start up the car and I uh, put it in reverse and I hear this <laughs> kaboom and I'm like oh whoa, whoa, what, what did I do and then I'm like oh shit I forgot to like lower the jack uh -huh. so the the jack was like scraping on the driveway a little bit and then I lowered it down and it was fine <laughs> Nice. All right, I'm done taking car advice from you. <laughs> hey, the car stops. Yeah, it good. does. Most Definitely. Of the time. It does all the time. <laughs> all the time it stops. All right. Are you done? Can we wrap? Yeah. Can we wrap up the CAO Flathead 450 spark plug review? Sure. I, yeah, we can wrap it up. All right. Let's wrap it up. I have to give it a thumbs down. Yeah. I don't like to do it. But I have to do it in this case. Yeah, I mean it's uh, come on, it, it it's a cheap cigar. I mean, okay, if you're on a golf course or you're doing something, an outdoor activity. Yeah, but I feel like there's so many cheap cigars that I could get for the same price or even lower that I'm, I'm our go-tos. Yeah. This isn't. But I mean, you don't have to think about it. You just smoke it, puff it, puff, 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 puff. And it's small, yeah. So yeah, I mean there are a lot better. I guess stuff. if you're not planning on smoking for the rest of the day and you don't mind your mouth coated in mineral oil um, and your hands coated in brown slurry, yeah, smoke it. Well, yeah. See, the thing is, you have the golf glove because you, are you right-handed? Yeah, but then you're messing up your nice white golf glove. Well, that always gets messed up anyway. So, no. kind of adds a little character to it. 
So, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm with you on the thumbs down. All right. Totally 100%. So, anyway, we got to go because I got some more car repairs to do. Apparently, he's got to change his brakes. So, anyway, we're out of here. All right. See you Bye. Next time. See you later.